Hi, I'm Jason Breach, Max Mr. Tools. Welcome to another Workshop Wednesday. Today, we're looking at a little bit of basic plane maintenance. Sounds a weird, stupid little thing, doesn't it? And, um, we want to keep things working nicely. Make them look good. That's an important part, an aesthetical looking plane, maybe. Um, I know regularly when we do things like shows and whatever, we have to make sure the stock looks good, nice and clean. But my planes at home, again, want to keep nice and clean. Make sure they function nicely. If you like, maybe preserve their value. Some of you might have some old planes. You want to clean them up so they look better. They do their job better. You might have your dad's plane that you suddenly go, God, wouldn't it look nice if it was a little bit shiny a bit? So we're gonna go with some real basics. And this is a nice short little video for this. Okay? So we have our, our planes, we have our culprit. So this is our culprit, the number four. This I found in one of the boxes that came back from the show. Um, if we turn it over, I think you can kind of see, hopefully on the film, if I move things about a little bit, you can see all these, all these little dots, okay? Now, what we're going to do, we're going to get CSI in, and where you've got your thumbprint on here, they're going to come and scan it, and they'll be able to tell me who it was by next week, okay? If you're an Inspector Morse fan, we're never going to find out, okay? So, we've got all those little marks. Now, I think people come in and say, and it's not just hand planes. We've got some steel straight edges that we've had back. This is all rest marks. No, this is all fingertip marks. So your fingertips are probably one of the worst things for actually transmitting moisture. So, you start putting bits, you leave it, can get rusty. So it will actually start to add little rust spots. I'm a bad one for this. Uh, the job I had before I started for power tools, I used to make furniture, and within a month the guy knew that I had damp, sticky fingertips all across his nice new combination machine. So this isn't good. But you're going to hold it, you're going to pick it up. So we need to clean these up a little bit, okay? So back down to the bench for a minute. This one's not too bad. First thing we need to do, and uh, it's probably got hopefully sharp blade. We're going to take it out. I'll prop it up on the pencil just to hold it up off the bench. Take the blade out. We don't want to damage that. We don't want to get anything on there. You can use a number of things depending on how rusty or how bad the damage is. So this is a Garaflex box. Okay. Hopefully we can see that up on there. It's 240 grit, so this is the finest one we do out of the free. Okay, they go coarser, just like abrasive paper. What are these? They're rubber with basically abrasive particles in. Okay, so I can flex it. A square block, move them about, okay. So if we've got something that needs quite a bit of work, we can actually use this. That's back and forwards. Try and work in the same direction. So I've stayed nicely on the cheeks of the plane on the side. Well, I said, not too much to do to this one. So, already, looking a lot better, okay? Can you see that? And then we go, better end of there, you can see more marks. We're going to do the bottom in a minute as well, so turn it over, I'm going to lay it down again. So, the Garaflex block I tend to use if it's something a little bit coarser normally, a bit more rust marks. And you've got to remember these are a high ductile iron. As much as they will resist corroding and the rust, it will still happen, especially if you leave them get damp. Other thing we can use, let's bring this in to try and show you this. This is synthetic steel wool, Webrex or Merlon. Different manufacturers. The maroon colour, 360 grit. The grey, 1500. So again, depending on what I want to do, how coarse the damage is, what do I want to clean up, might determine what we go with. So I've already said, not too bad this. Let's go with the 1500 for a minute. Now, we'll take the blade out. I'm gonna rub this up and down. Looks better, hope you can see that. Bring them right in up to you, look. A bit shinier. We've lost all these, I can put them back. So it gives you an idea of how quick and easy that is to transmit 
bit of moisture again, okay? So let's just do there. Other things if you've got, and again this one's quite clean, occasionally you might find you get a dent mark somewhere around the edge, something knocks together, damages it. Something as simple as a file, take that off. Worst one I've ever had was back corner, down on here, little dent, curled it over. Every time I did a line and planed something, I got a scratch line after it. Nothing more soul destroying, I went for, you know, what's going on? So, something as simple as a file, you can soften the corners in, get rid of any sharp edges. But you can see the use of that bit, really useful. Okay, clean it all up. The Garaflex, like I said, we, a little bit harder. We'll clean things out without damaging it. Try not to go round and round, work in one direction. Keep it nice and constant, it'll look better. Same when we used the Webrex or the Merlon, up and down. Okay, so that's got rid of the worst of there. Anything in here is not too bad at the moment, not too much rust. If this has gone rusty, we need to take the frog out. Again, a couple of videos time, we're gonna look at that sort of thing, strip them down. So, nice and clean in here. Now we want to preserve it a little bit. So, camellia oil, okay? The Japanese have used this for centuries to protect their samurai swords. Quite interesting what we, when you watch the antique road show, we have an English sword from 250 years ago that comes in and it's covered in rust. They bring a samurai sword in that's a thousand years old, whatever, and it's still shiny. So. This is going to stop things corroding. Now, we can spray it on, or we can use a small applicator. Now, this allows me to wipe it on. Okay. I can do in here as well, okay. A little bit of fiddly in there. Other major place I would do, especially if I'm sharpening the blade and using a water stone or anything, do that, okay. So we'll put that on, the cap back out of the way. A bit of blue tail. I don't want loads on here. From memory and from knowing we're using it, it doesn't actually mark your wood. So that's an important part, the fact that it won't stain the material, it won't affect your overall finish, but I don't want loads. Clean the bench up. Our blade. Just going to wipe off the excess. As we said, a few weeks time we're going to look at what we can do with blade sharpening, all that sort of thing. So that's nice and clean in there. Handle wise, you could wipe over with a normal wood oil, give that a bit more protection, but really it's about protecting your blade and the sole of the plane, got rid of those fingertips. Bronze bit, not too bad. Let's have a look. Put the plane back to there. Again, if you've got your cap iron, we can rub these over. Especially if they start to get a bit dull. So that'll give you something back to a nice shiny surface again. You can see the difference between, hopefully, the darker colour. We do screw as well look. real simple little thing just to help protect things we're moving to that time of year where there's a bit more damp in the workshop but we're move, also moving to that time of year when you're all going to be out there playing with your toys you haven't had them out during the summer maybe you pick them up and whatever put them away you have all those fingertips it might be nice just to give things a little bit of a cleaner protect things plain socks so there you go, something different for Christmas, different type of sock. So, we can put that into there. These have a rust inhibitor. We can do it up. That protects it, stops it getting those little nooks, also stops the rust getting to it. So hopefully that gives you a bit more of an idea about protecting. Okay, doesn't look much now, does it? But hope it will preserve it, make it look nice and clean, stop it going rusty. I think it really damaged water. We did have a plane come in, a Nielsen plane, 
steel bodied and the guy had a leak in his shed. Funnily enough, had it in a pan sock. He got a watermark that went all the way around it. We actually physically had to leave it on a radiator for a week to dry it out. Each day I came back in, there was another rust mark. So I had to really get that dry, then go with the camellia oil. So it can take a little bit of effort, but the camellia oil actually gets into the metal particles, into those fibres of the metal. That'll help. Okay, so hopefully you've enjoyed today. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next week at 4pm.